Today on the show, we're going to be talking about the first two issues of New Superman and the cultural implications that this book has. If you're a fan of Superboy in the 90s especially, then pay attention because you are going to love New Superman. So in this video, we're going to talk about the first two issues of New Superman and we're going to talk about how Asian people have been represented in comics as a whole or just media in general. So the first issue starts out with New Superman doing some narration. He's saying, in the entire history of China, there are only three people as important as him. The first emperor, Chairman Mao, and Yao Ming. But you might be able to make a case for Confucius if you tried really hard. We then see a kid and he's being beaten up. And naturally you would assume that this is the type of comic story where it's like, oh my God, he's a kid that gets beat up and then he turns into Superman. No. New Superman's a bully. Yeah. The kid that he's bullying actually stands up to him and throws a lunchbox that he tried stealing back at the bully. But then obviously bully Superman gives chase. The kid tries running away and this is when Blue Condor turns up and tries taking this kid away. Naturally, our bully Superman would retaliate and would throw a can of soldier cola at Blue Condor. This actually causes him to drop the kid and just fly away. But Blue Condor has a history of killing people on the spot. So this was really irregular and now everyone's praising this kid as a hero. Then a news reporter named Lainey Lan, which, you know, we get it. Lainey Lan, Lois Lane, he's Superman, guys. Did you know that Superman sometimes does Lois Lane. Anyway, he introduces himself as Kong Keenan, and he actually invites Lainey Lan over to his place later that night for an interview. Naturally, he's really, really excited, so he goes to his dad's work to tell him all about it. Here it's kind of revealed that his father's kind of neglectful. He doesn't really care that his own kid almost died. He's heard all about the story already, and he just doesn't give two shits. He actually says that he won't even be there for his own kid's interview, so this really upsets Keenan and he decides to go and visit his mother's grave. But this is when Dr. Omen visits him and starts talking to him. She reveals she knows a lot about his past and makes him an offer that he won't be able to refuse. She takes him to the Oriental Pearl Tower in Shanghai and dresses him in a super suit and then tells him to step into an origin chamber. But she doesn't fully explain what's going on. She just kind of briefly tells him that he has the heart of a hero. This origin chamber may or may not kill him, but Keenan doesn't know that, but Dr. Omen knows that. And then they activate it and it looks like it's going to kill him. And they don't turn it off, they just keep it going because it might work. As his body is changing in this origin chamber, Keenan starts to have dreams about being Superman and trying to save his mother from her death in a plane crash years ago. But in reality, when it looks like the origin chamber is about to blow and all is lost, this is when Keenan shoots out of it with Superman's powers. He actually can't control his powers and starts shooting his laser vision everywhere. And when they tell him to try and control himself, he's just kind of like, no, I've got Superman's powers. No one can tell me what to do. But this is when the Justice League of China jumps in to stop him. This is actually where the first issue ends. But before we continue on to the second issue, I just kind of want to talk about why this comic is so important. Asian people in Western media typically aren't taken that seriously. This applies to all forms of media in the West, ranging from comic books to television to even in the porn industry. For a long time in the gay porn industry, if two Asian men were having sex, it was actually referred to as lesbian sex. You would think that things have improved over the years, and they kind of have, but not to a large extent. This is largely due to a lack of representation in mainstream media. Usually if there's an Asian character, they're the friend, the science geek, the nail technician, or the person going, welcome to Japan. Mr. Bond. Even I'm guilty of perpetuating this lack of representation. I am part Asian and yet I kept that a secret when I first started YouTube because I wanted people to take me seriously and Asian people are not taken seriously. You don't even need to look further than Summer in the City, the UK's version of VidCon. There were 120 guests. Out of that 120 guests, six were not white one of which was Asian. And some people like to argue, well, there aren't that many Asian people walking around. Look at London, look at the content that UK YouTubers make. Yeah, okay, a large portion of them are white, but it doesn't make sense to invite 120 YouTubers and only have six of them not be white. Like, 
That's an insane ratio that is not accurate to UK YouTubers whatsoever. So how does this tie into New Superman? Well, Marvel and DC are pretty infamous for not really representing other races that aren't white. They've improved a lot over the years, but we still have a long way to go. This being said, I really don't feel like we should be publishing comics on the grounds of, and here we have the Asian team, and there we have the black character, and there we have the gay guy. I feel like that doesn't really promote good storytelling. We need to have writers that are actually equipped to write about these characters, which is happening in New Superman. But an easy way to take the mantle of Superman and have it be new and fresh is to take that mantle, take those powers, and give it to someone else from a different culture. That's all new Superman is doing. It's not replacing the old Superman, it's just kind of doing a different spin on that title and those powers. By doing this, this book offers us a whole new story, a whole new set of social commentary that hasn't really been explored in comics before and allows representation for a minor race in comics. I'm not saying Asian people haven't been represented in comics as a whole in the past. Obviously there are Asian super teams running around. In Marvel Comics you've got Big Hero 6, and even in DC Comics you have the super young team. But neither of those are major teams. So for an Asian team to have a title like the Justice League, it's a huge deal. Which is why New Superman, in my mind, is amazing. Okay, so back to the story. Put simply, Wonder Woman of China and Batman of China have Superman outmatched. And to top it all off, his powers randomly stop working and they cause him to pass out. When he calls up his dad the next day to be like, hey, I'm safe, I know I didn't come home last night, his dad just kind of blows him off again. Like, his dad didn't even know his own son was missing. Dr. Omen then walks in and it's only here that Keenan asks, okay, what the hell is going on? And it's here that I realized I am exactly like Keenan, aside from being a bully because I'm a huge pacifist. It's then explained to him that he's now a part of the Justice League of China. And the reason they are using the mantle, the Justice League of China, is because Dr. Omen feels like the only way for China to gain the respect of the West, and America in particular, is to beat them at their own game. And rather than replicating what the previous Asian super team, the Great Ten, did, they are just going to do exactly what the West did, but better. When Keenan tries to escape to go home, it turns out his powers are still missing, and then Dr. Omen puts this shock visor on him that basically disciplines him should he ever step out of line. Because, you know, that's totally not over the top. And then he's forced to do homework on the Justice League and Superman. Spoilers, he doesn't do the homework. That becomes a reoccurring theme in this book. We then see Keenan's dad at his writer's club and things look a bit suspicious, but we're not given any clarity on that just yet. Batman and Wonder Woman are then being briefed on their next mission and they have to go and save this woman from a solar-based supervillain. Keenan then steps in and is like, hey, I know exactly where that woman lives and I know exactly how to get into that gated community so they have to take him along with them. And here's where things get really, really fun and interesting. Batman and Wonder Woman hate Keenan, like with a passion. They think he's a complete idiot. So much fun, it's so much fun. This like interaction they have going on in the car is so good. This book in general is good at character interactions and emotions, but this part in the car is one of my favorite bits. When they get to the house, Batman and Wonder Woman are like, Keenan, you don't have any powers, you stay in the car. They jump into the house to save the day and Wonder Woman flies out with a child in her arms that is crying. And then she leaves that child with Keenan and is like, you look after this baby because you don't have any powers and can't fight. Keenan looks at this child and he's reminded of when he was a child and he found out that his mother had died. And he doesn't want this child to go through that exact same thing. And this sparks something within him and he jumps out of the car and goes and punches Sunbeam. But this is when a solar beam is shot at his head point blank, making everyone think that he has died. Wonder Woman and Batman step in because they need to try and get gravity over the situation again. But this is when Keenan gets up fully powered. He is Superman once again. He is able to defeat Sunbeam within seconds and save the day and allow Wonder Woman to tie him up with her magic lasso. Then Lainey Lan rushes in with the media and wants to interview this new superhero team. And Keenan's like, hey, don't you recognize me? And she's like, why would I recognize you? You've got a mask on, I can't recognize you. 
and so he takes off the mask because he has a huge crush on her and wants to impress her and reveals himself as new Superman to the entire world. This gets the attention of heroes and villains from around the world and pisses off the Batman of China, Wonder Woman of China and Dr. Omen. That's where this issue ends. I love this comic so much. I love how diverse the characters are in terms of personality. And you know this is a good book because it's not focusing so much on the fact that, hey, did you know they're Chinese? Hey, they're Chinese. Hey, they're part Asian. Hey, you should be liking this because diversity. Because even if this book was set in America, it would still be such a good book. This is my favorite book from DC in the moment. This is my favorite comic in a long, long, long time. You should all be reading it, especially if you like 90s Superboy. Because here's the thing, Keenan is acting so similar to Connell. It's like insane how similar they are. And so many people are saying they miss Connell. Read new Superman. He's still around. He's just kind of like been reborn as Asian. I put links down below to mycomicshop.com to where you can get the 90 Superboy run so you can read some classic Connell and to where you can get new Superman because you should all be reading new Superman. Like no questions asked, you should be reading it. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. So what did you think of new Superman number one? Please let me in the comments down below. Are you happy that there's more Asian representation in comics? Because I sure as hell am. This book just makes me really excited and it's a good book. Even if you drop the Asian aspect, it's not just good because it's representing an underrepresented culture in comics. But please let me in the comments down below what you think. And also what books are you reading from DC at the moment and are you enjoying them? Please let me in the comments down below as well. But also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you can see more history videos. Also, don't forget to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, support my show by checking my Patreon so I can make bigger and better and more history videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my vlogging channel where I just make vlogs about my life. But for now, my name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective. I didn't even get into the characters' designs, like, I am cosplaying new Superman to WonderCon. Like, no one can stop me. I've already bought the fabric. Like, I love that character so much already. He's become my favourite character from this era of DC because like, Wiccan is me in Marvel. Like, it's one extreme of my personality. But Wiccan lacks the fact that I'm very judgmental. Like, I'm really judgmental. I try not to be, but I just am. New Superman, it's, it's that. It's my judgmental half. And it all just kind of goes together perfectly. And I love it so much. Please read it. I'm cosplaying it. Please. It's so good. <laughs>